Chhattisgarh, or Gujarat, Punjab, these were, uh, these were uh, places that we had previously not had uh, immediate presence of MSSI. And it is very heartening to see all these footprints growing across India as the map further develops. So key takeaways of the Numbers Matter campaign. The petition is one part, the NEMS map is the other part. Both of them together come together to spread awareness on MS. They also help us to grow the MS community as we are trying to reach out to more and more people across the country to map the map, the map the prevalence of MS and also to get them to the fold of coming together as a single voice. Uh, it's also helping us garner more support for the campaign as people come and sign the petition, more people get to know about it and more people say that, hey, I want to make sure that your voice is strengthened. And of course, at the end, both of these will be very powerful tools that we hope to use for advocacy. As I mentioned before, four weeks down the line, we are submitting this petition and the uh, India MS map learnings to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Also bodies like the ICMR, the Indian Council for Medical Research and the National Institute of Health and Family Welfare. So um, I'll wrap up at that. Now you know why we are here. And but I'll before I say thank you, I will leave you with a small video that will show you the energy that we had in the last one week and the energy of the campaign. So um, playing the video for you. Thank you for your patience and in, in listening through. So if you have not signed the petition, please do sign on change.org slash am I counted. And please continue following our social media for all campaign updates. Renuka, over to you. Thanks a lot, Nazia. Um, I can see the excitement and I can see how much of effort has gone into it. And I really hope and pray that we uh, expand beyond the existing boundaries. And really, coming back to what you said and how we started, it's all about numbers. We are a 35-year-old organization. We are seeing a lot of awareness already being generated. We are hearing from many new people who want to get connected with us. We don't want to leave anyone behind. After all, if you don't have numbers, then you will leave people behind. And that's really not fair. That's not fair for any Indian citizen who has the right to access, uh, universal access to healthcare and services and benefits. So this brings me to my next section. And it's always an honor and a privilege for me to welcome the speakers. I would like to welcome Dr. Kameshwar Prasad, as I had mentioned. And for all those who know him, he's a man who doesn't need any introduction. But there are many people who are joining us from different places who probably have not heard about MS, MSSI, or maybe Dr. Kameshwar Prasad. Um, so I will go ahead and introduce him. But what I said earlier was that uh, Dr. Kameshwar Prasad has been, is currently the director and the chief executive officer of the uh, uh, Rajinder Institute of Medical Sciences, Ranchi, which is in Jharkhand. And you saw we did have some people in Jharkhand. Uh, he's also been a former head of department of neurology at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. And Professor Prasad is, of course, which I mentioned earlier, a very, very eminent neurologist. He has been involved in research. He's an academic, and um, I just mentioned what uh, he did in his capacity as uh, when he was in the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. What I also mentioned was, and it's an honor to have somebody who's as busy as him to be a part of this webinar and this session, 
He's an awardee for uh, of the highest civilian, one of the highest civilian awards of India. And it is not for nothing that these awards are given. So we are absolutely honored to have him with us. He is also uh, one of the very key players of the uh, Medical and Scientific Advisory Committee of MSSI. Why I say he's one of the key players is very often you don't come across doctors who would advocate for affordable treatment for diseases like multiple sclerosis, which has a huge cost implication on the life of an MS person as well as his family. Uh, Dr. Prasad has also been um, very vocal and has supported us in every way. I remember he was one of the few people who called out and said MSSI should be doing uh, all these kinds of activities. So we have almost come a full circle and I'm sure we will get more support. It's um, um, the floor is yours. I welcome you once again, Dr. Prasad. Um, you're going to be, we're dying to hear from you about how your experience has been on numbers and how it impacts policy and its importance. It's over to you. Uh, one second, you're on mute. All right, sorry about that. Thank you, Ms. Renuka. It's always a pleasure to be uh, present in one of the functions or any of the functions in uh, Multiple Sclerosis Society of India. Uh, I have seen over the years and those who do not know, I have been associated in some way or the other with uh, Multiple Sclerosis Society for the last 30 years. So uh, initially I was only going and presenting, let's say some uh, guidance for the patients uh, in one of the society meetings. But gradually uh, it so happened that I got more and more involved in multiple activities of MSSI. So I am uh, really uh, very pleased to be here. Uh, so all the members of the MSSI who are attending or even those who are not members but who support the case of multiple sclerosis and uh, our uh, guest uh, Russell who is uh, joining us all the way from uh, London. I think uh, uh, it's really a momentous day for all of us when MSSI has taken the role which was perhaps uh, missed by the national uh, research organizations for years. India is probably only one of the G27 countries where we do not have uh, proper prevalence or incidence data of multiple sclerosis in our country. But there is, uh, uh, I think, a uh, good start and I think this will succeed for sure. Uh, when we say the numbers matter, actually, uh, it's not only a play of words. These numbers really do matter because they are not mere statistics. Many of these numbers represent uh, devastation of whole of life dreams for some of the people. These numbers represent the over anxiousness, anxiety, worries of the family members of many of those people who are diagnosed with MS right in the beginning, though it settles down with time. These numbers represent many of those who have actually suffered or maybe uh, lost a lot of their belongings in pursuit of buying medicines for this treatment. And these numbers represent many people who have actually worked hard for years for their treatment and in the search of a cure, they have probably traveled far and wide across the country and even beyond the borders of the country to find ultimately that uh, they are better, but they are not necessarily cured. These numbers also represent many of those who were young and about to be married, 
but could not get married and some who actually got married but was not, were not fortunate enough to continue their marriage for various reasons and there are unfortunately some who have gone into wheelchair because no uh, proper medication treatment or let's say effective treatment was uh, given to them so it's these numbers are actually a cumulative sum of all of these together and therefore one should not see these numbers as mere statistics and i hope when you collect these numbers and we have the right figures it will move even the most difficult people sitting somewhere in policy making or in administration or in research organization and uh, some attempts have already been made and i think uh, i presented some work which was going on for some years and i should tell you that very recently on 14th of july 2021 the work which was being carried out which was estimating what could be the number of multiple sclerosis in india has been published in a prestigious journal called lancet global health and uh, i have given a copy of that paper to ms renuka those who are interested to see they may see uh, that paper but i am quoting from the table of that paper which uh, uh, gives some figures which are i think uh, est estimates that if we think about 2019 then number of multiple sclerosis patients present uh, in 2019 in india are estimated to be 106600 but this is as i told you an estimate and it also gives a probable figure which could be anywhere between 83800 to 130300 so you can imagine that we don't know there is so much uncertainty on one hand uh, we it, it is 83800 on the other hand 130300 in between where is the right figure nobody knows and uh, uh, this is the campaign which multiple sclerosis society of india is undertaking may actually lead us to a different number than 83000 or 130000 it is some people estimate that figures may be as high as 200000 i mean in this guess work this one doesn't really know where one stands though we know that females are bigger in number as compared to males certainly by a factor of 2 so if the number is 100000 for example probably 40000 are males and 60000 are females or maybe uh, even uh, a bigger difference than what i am estimating or quoting from the indian council of medical research data but these are the numbers which are present if you count but every year new cases are coming up and that number also is not known how many cases new cases come up every year it is estimated by the exercise which i just uh, quoted you from is that about 6500 new cases are added every year to the pool of multiple sclerosis patients and uh, this is also an estimate we don't really know what is the correct number it can be much less than this or it may be much higher than this so that is that is why we need to put a serious thought to know what is probably the right figure of the number of multiple sclerosis patients in india because without these numbers as uh, nazia was presenting you are not able to attract the attention of policy makers and even uh, people who are engaged in welfare or societies societal welfare and therefore neither you are able to do some welfare activity in the interest of ms patients nor you you are able to persuade people 
to manage the price structure of the drugs which run into sometimes even hundred thousand dollar per year if it comes to the cost of medical uh, treatment of ms patient so depending on which uh, medicine you go for cladribine for example is up to almost uh, hundred thousand dollar per year which you can imagine hardly any patient in india can even dream of uh, getting and with the uh, poor insurance structure in our country it is all the more important that some attention is given to these things which unfortunately our policy makers have are not giving because again because they don't have the numbers and we don't have the numbers to advocate adequately and impress upon those who matter and uh, to attract their attention to things which will actually improve the lives of patients of multiple sclerosis uh, i did not uh, over emphasize or emphasize the importance of numbers because many of you already know but uh, as very rightly uh, a scientist uh, who was also a philosopher said that uh, if you don't know the numbers probably you don't know much about the condition only if you have the numbers you have you know something about the condition so we don't have even uh, you can say a reasonable accuracy of number of multiple sclerosis patients in india and therefore the importance which should be attached to it is lacking and i can tell you from my own experience that when we in indian council of medical research sometimes we discussed research proposals pertaining to multiple sclerosis and uh, when they look at all the various neurological disorders and obviously they look at the numbers when they say okay we can leave multiple sclerosis for the time being let us fund the projects on for example a stroke or epilepsy or parkinson's disease so multiple sclerosis goes lower down in the list again the reason is that we don't know the numbers and needless to say that numbers matter everywhere so i think this is a very good beginning and uh, there is already so much enthusiasm i could see from the presentation made by nadia that thousands of people are enrolling and i'm sure this momentum will gather with time and it will have the force which will cover perhaps whole of india and we will reach very soon 100000 and several hundred thousand hopefully uh, whatever the numbers could be uh, to the right figure with due course of time and this time will be shorter rather than longer because when you inject a kind of public movement into the society then people see it as a responsibility to report and the way you have really campaign or is camp our campaigning is really great because you are able to persuade people to see that it is their responsibility to report to get enrolled because it is in their interest and it is uh, be being steered from multiple sclerosis society of india which is their society and therefore it gives much more confidence and probably interest and enthusiasm for, for people to enroll into this movement i have no doubt that in a course of time which will be probably a few months or at the most a year or two you will have the right figure which will certainly uh, be more accurate than the estimates which we have come up with by estimation and modeling where which is uh, done uh, through a methodology which is developed by university of uh, washington 
and uh, there is an institute of metrics and evaluation who actually do this exercise for all the conditions which you can think about and uh, there is often a saying that uh, when you ask people in the dinner time where did you come the where did you get this number from and then uh, sometimes in lighter vein they will tell you that over a coffee table we are through just discussions so these numbers come through some discussions but really uh, how far they are from the actual figure how close they are we don't know. this exercise is immensely important and i cannot uh, tell you how important it is for people to register and how important it is for leaders like you to really enthuse people to enroll and register this will be a kind of also an example in a developing country where through crowd crowdsourcing you get the burden estimates of a disease which is has been ignored or neglected by the government or research organizations for years so i really wish success uh, from the bottom of my of my heart to this campaign to this movement and to the people who are joining and uh, enrolling I'm, I'm sure you will succeed and this success will be a beginning of a whole lot of issues or whole lot of activities which will follow and through that activity i think you will be able to achieve the best uh, for the enjoyable life of the patients of multiple sclerosis i wish you success and with that i i give the floor to the organizers thank you very much for inviting me it's a pleasure to be here thank you very much dr prasad uh, you have actually uh, given us such encouraging words you know when we embarked on something like this we didn't even know whether we are doing the right thing the wrong thing what will be the results that will yield but hearing from someone like an expert like yourself does really give us re, re, rejuvenated us with the belief that we are on the right path even though we are voicing the opinion of very few of our members there are many many more people whose voice we are taking through our campaign um thank you for for being so um so kind and so um, real in in expressing how MSSI is trying to achieve and improve the quality of life of people with MS. Um, so before we actually head off to our next speaker, I have to take a very interesting detour. And um, this is where we come to the main part. And I will not steal the thunder of Nazia. Nazia, it's back to you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Prasad, for the very kind words. And now in your August presence, we would like to um, unveil the India MS Map website. I am again sharing my screen. And in the presence of Dr. Prasad, I am counting down to the unveiling of the India MS Map website. And here we go. I shall click on this link and launch the website. It's opening. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Indian India MS map dot org is the URL. Please make a note india msmap.org it's a unique very unique crowdsource mapping of people living with ms please do participate here is the look of first look of the map for you as you can see it's growing as you know it's a dynamic map as people participate and put in there and volunteer the information this map will keep growing this map right now is populated with our data from the last one month when we had opened the forms, 
but in the next one year we hope to see this taking the prevalence of nms community to what we hope will be something that researchers and policy makers will benefit from as you can see the spot the hot spots are growing in one of in some of the major cities in other places there's a little there are little dots all around if you go down scroll down further on the website uh, i think we will come back to that and uh, i'll give you a full run through of the website first let's hear rachel uh, perhaps renuka i'll hand it back to you to uh, take it forward from here and we'll come back to the website later thank you very much uh, that was really exciting and let's keep the excitement uh, for the end but what is more important is how beautifully we are seeing the india map populate and you know when unfortunately the covid pandemic hit us we could see the heat maps of of the areas which were becoming containment zones and you know that kind of spurred us to think that why can't we do something like this for ms and of course we have a very very powerful authentic data in the atlas of ms so uh, that was a sneak peek and Nazia is going to tell you and walk you through a little bit more on how you're going to participate so that it can be a little bit more engaging and participative. But uh, that's for a later, for a little bit later. But now I would have, I, I have the honor and the privilege of welcoming our next speaker. Uh, that is Rachel King and Rachel has been the lead on the Atlas of MS, as well as the evidence manager at MS International Federation. Um, she has been very, very proactively reaching out to all of us and working with different countries on how the Atlas of MS can be used. And she's got some very, very interesting case studies that uh, we are going to be hearing from her um, on how people have used data in different parts of the world and different part, different countries who are also member organizations of MS International Federation to change policy, to influence policy. So um, uh, Rachel, it's a privilege to have you. I know it's really early. This is a good place for you to start. And um, we are dying to listen to you and hear some of the interesting uh, case stories and success stories on the importance of the Atlas of MS and also how people are using it in different countries to uh, advocate for their cause. It's over to you, Rachel. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Vanuka, for that very warm introduction. And I'm very excited to be here today and to feature as part of your, your launch for the MS um, India map. It's a very exciting initiative. So um, to get started, I'm, I'm very aware that not all of you will be aware of MSIF, um, which is the MS International Federation, which is where I work. Um, so I just wanted to give you a very brief introduction. So it's a global network of 47 MS organizations from around the world, um, but we actually work with many others um, outside of our member network. And MSI SI are, are one of our members and I've highlighted them here. So what we do as a movement, that's all of those organisations together, is that we aim to strengthen and support MS organisations um, from around by sharing expertise and resources. Um, and we also together campaign for increased awareness of MS, um, which is obviously really important to do on a global um, level as well as at a national level. We provide information and advice and we support international research into better treatments and ways to manage MS. I suppose really to sum it up is that we believe that working together that we can be stronger and we can have a much bigger effect to change and improve um, people's lives with MS. But obviously I'm here to primarily talk to you about the Atlas of MS. Um, and to probably start that off, I thought I'd introduce about where the Atlas got started. Um, so originally it was in 2008 
um, we formed the Atlas with the World Health Organization. And really it came into being because in 2001, the World Health Organization launched the Atlas, um, the first Atlas, which focused on mental health and sharing um, what the resources of that was around the world um, and information and disseminated that. And we could see how powerful a tool that was. And we wanted to make sure that we had a similar tool for that, for MS, um, a, a global and a national level. Now we updated that in 2013, and we know that those two editions have been used in everything to help government planning, research initiatives, as well as campaigning and advocacy. And, but, and that's advocacy not only at a national level, but also at a global level, you know, influencing people like the World Health Organization or the World Federation of Neurology. So it's really essential that those decisions are based on the most recent data available. And we've just published um, the third edition um, where we had the first part launched last last year, late September last year, and we second, launched the second part just a couple of months ago. And you can see here is a quote I've included from the WHO, which just really, again, I think summarizes the importance of data. So really why everything you've heard today about why numbers matters, and that's because it helps policymakers, it helps health planners, and it helps specialists. And the whole point of that is to help decrease inequalities and improve care for MS patients. So I'm often asked why are global tools such as the Atlas of MS important? So I think one of the, the key things is that it's an open source data. So all the data we collect, we've published on our website, and that's open source for everyone around the world to use. So we invite researchers, academics, um, clinicians, people with MS to review that data and see if there's any additional learnings that might be relevant for the country. Um, but also to make sure that everyone realizes what the global number is of people with MS around the world, because that's a very important number to base decisions on. I suppose the other thing about the Atlas is that in many countries, the data around MS is dispersed, so it's in different sources and different data sets. And the Atlas helps bring that all together in one place, which obviously has advantages for people doing analysis and, and trying to learn from the data. Quite a unique thing about the Atlas is it does allow countries to compare themselves to other countries in their region or compare to other countries with a similar income band. Um, and that comparison can be quite powerful to drive change. And one of the examples I'm going to show you today will show you just how that has come into action. Now, importantly, um, it's important that data is used and is useful. Um, and this kind of data is very important to raise awareness, but also in terms of advocacy. And you've heard today how important it is that decision makers have the numbers they need to enable them to make those decisions. If you go to a, a decision maker and say you want to bring the cost of treatments down, they need to understand how many people that would affect and what the ultimate price of that difference would be. So numbers really do matter. It also is a global tool that allows us to learn from each other. So some of the examples I'm gonna show you today are examples from around the world. And you know, they can be used in different ways um, in different countries to help um, countries generate the change that they want to, to, and they need for people with MS. It allows us to discuss and learn. You know, what we found actually is some of the inequalities are very similar um, across the world and they affect high income countries as well as low income countries, even if those mechanisms for those inequalities might be different. And importantly, it highlights the gaps in the data at a national level, but also at a global level. And you know, we recognize that lots of countries have issues collecting this type of data. So it's really important that we can advocate for the world to change and show the importance of having that type of data to help us make decisions. It really is a cornerstone to help sure that health planners have the information they need. So 
what's interesting about your campaign is you're looking at crowdsourced data and that's exactly what the atlas is too so we asked every country around the world um, to provide data for the atlas um, and if we just relied on published data we would have lots of gaps in our data um, and it wouldn't be very comprehensive so the atlas collects data from surveys that perhaps are not published yet from registries um, and opinions of experts around the world. And that allows us to give us that comprehensive picture. And what we do is we ask experts in every country to collaborate to make sure that that data they provide to us is a picture of the whole country. Because um, it might be that those data sources, as I say, are very dispersed and might have data held at locally at different hospitals. And those experts can help collate that information and provide a national picture. So in our third edition of the Atlas, we now know that there is approximately 2.8 million people living with MS around the world. Now, if we turn that into um, a population stats, that's around one in every 3,000 adults has MS. Um, and in some countries, that can be as high as one in every 300 people with MS. And we've seen that those numbers have increased since our last publication, where we showed that it was 2.3 million people. Now, there's lots of different reasons why that increase um, has come to force, lots of different driving factors. We know that many countries have improved their ability to count the number of people with MS. And you wouldn't believe how difficult that is for, for many countries. So that's a good first step. And I think that your Numbers Matters campaign will help improve India's um, way of counting people with MS. We also know that um, diagnosis for MS has improved and people are being diagnosed earlier due to new um, criteria for diagnosis, the McDonald 2017. And we also know that, that treatments are making a difference and people with MS are, make, are living longer. So that's why um, those numbers have increased, um, but it's really important that we have the most accurate data as possible. So, as Vanuka said, I just wanted to check, talk you through a few case studies that really demonstrate why those numbers are important and show you how different countries have used these to drive change. So the first um, case study I have is based in the United States, um, where they've used the um, new prevalence data as an advocacy tool. Now, they ran a new um, epidemiology study um, back in 2019, and that was led by the, um, the National MS Society. Um, and it showed that they had almost a million people living in the country with MS. Now, why that's quite striking is that's two times as many as they previously thought. Um, so they'd originally based their data using modeling and separation from a very old study that was conducted in 1975. So they now showed that they've got double that number. And that allowed them to advocate for change. They advocated and persuaded the government to fund and increase investment in MS. Importantly, to fund research projects into MS, but also to improve the surveillance systems with MS. So they'll be better at monitoring and counting people with MS going forward. So it shows you having that number is really important because you can persuade the government to do something about it. And I think that's really critical for your campaign, because if you can show that number and that it's higher than you originally thought, that can have great um, potential for generating change in your country. This case study now is in Ireland. And what they showed here is back in 2008, they had 14 neurologists in the country. And they realized that when they looked at the comparative data, if they looked at all of the countries in Europe, um, which is shown in the Atlas of MS, that they had a lower number of neurologists per 100,000 people than any other country in Europe. Now they recognized that that number of neurologists is not just an issue for people with MS, but obviously affects all of the neurological conditions. And so they worked with the Neurological Alliance of Ireland to persuade the government and to advocate for change. 
Um, and really pleased to report that the government took notice and said that they um, wanted to increase the number of neurologists. And in 2001, they now have 37 neurologists in the country. Now, whilst that's really good progress and it has shown that that has um, improved, the data still shows that they lag behind other European countries. So they're going to use the data from the latest atlas to carry on that work and for advocating for more neurologists because clearly they're critical for the diagnosis and the care of people with MS in the country. Now, this next example comes from Denmark. Um, and they use the data from the Atlas of MS this year to help um, in their campaign for World MS Day, which happens every May. Um, and they saw in the Atlas that every five minutes, someone somewhere in the world is diagnosed with MS. Now they took that information and thought, well, how many people does that make being diagnosed a day? And they worked out it was 288 people. And they use that to help challenge people um, in a fundraising campaign. So they challenge their audience to do something, it could be anything, 288 times and to raise money um, by doing so. So they could run 288 kilometers, they might bake 288 cakes, they might watch 288 films, whatever they wanted to do to, to raise that money. Um, and they saw a great success from this campaign because it helped raise awareness of MS. Um, they reached new audiences. Um, and I think this campaign yeah, 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 well, uh, not you, you. I think this campaign has lots of legs to be used in different ways. So you can use it to create engagement for um, signing a petition, like that you're doing with um, the Numbers Matters campaign or to encourage people to post messages 288 times on social media, anything to create excitement and engagement and to, to reach a different audience and wider audience. And then just a few very quick examples um, about other ways. So uh, other countries have used the data um, to help drive change in slightly different ways. Um, so, um, we've seen that there's um, a way of perhaps um, asking health professionals to form alliances to help share MS expertise. So if you're living in a country where there are fewer MS experts, that perhaps um, you can create an alliance with another country where there is more MS experts. Or simply having data like the data in the Atlas can help raise awareness of MS and the issues with MS. And um, create excitement, engagement, just might open doors to those stakeholders you've never been able to reach before. And actually even the lack of data can be used to leverage change. So we certainly know of some people who are using the comparative data by saying, we have less data in our country than our neighboring country. Um, and that's been a real motivator to change so that um, because a country doesn't want to be seen as being um, behind others or that could be also translated within a, a state um, or regional um, kind of information too. So lots of different examples there about how data can be used um, and why really numbers matter, which is very much ties into looking at your campaign and your India map of MS. You know, I can see that that is going to have real value to help you reach people who are currently not counted. Um, that that will provide the evidence you need for a national registry. Um, and it will ensure that the decision makers and planners will have the most accurate and comprehensive information to ensure that they can plan um, around the health provision and the policies to make sure that everyone's needs um, are met. Um, it also has the benefit of raising awareness and um, governance support for MSSI, which is obviously really important. And I'm really excited to see how your campaign goes, because um, I know that lots of the countries I deal with have um, issues with data, just as you do. They have data that's missing. Um, and I see this as a really simple and an engaging way to reach beyond um, your, your current um, relationships to show that there are more people out there. 
And I think probably what's important about that is we have to remember that although numbers matter, that there are people behind each of those numbers and we all want them to live the best lives that they can. So it's really important that that is possible. So one of the things that I would think is really exciting is, is how can we ensure the campaign has the widest reach, you know, beyond your chapters, inclusive of people of all walks of life, you know, using the influencers like you spoke about, using everyone today here to help amplify that message and share it beyond your networks, working with other NGOs such as those that, that focus on disability or chronic illnesses, um, or perhaps those that, that help um, reach people who are digitally excluded or help, you know, translate it into other languages to, to make sure you get that wide reach. So I'm really excited and I can't wait to see the outcomes and the impact of your campaign. And that's all from me. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, um, Rachel. That was really very, very comprehensive. I'm so glad that we have so many people listening to how the Atlas of MS has helped many countries and advocate for change, advocate for um, better uh, diagnostics, you know, even a fun filled event like just 288 good things to do the, that you like and how it can raise funds. So. You've given us a lot of food for thought and a lot of uh, work that goes into the Atlas of MS helps people and organizations like us because we are able to do a comparative and push our cause even better. So thank you very much for those insights about the Atlas of MS and some of the success cases and good ways of using the Atlas. Uh, so um, I know that there are some uh, chats coming in and we know that you all want to know how we are going to participate in the Atlas. And so again, we have saved some time to walk you through what is really this whole India MS map? What should you be doing and how should you be doing it? So it's going to be Nazia who's going to give you a walkthrough of the India MS map. Nazia, it's over to you. Thank you, Renika and Rachel. Thank you for that leading question. How are we going to grow? Um, one key point that I would like to take you back to my earlier presentation would be that we are already seeing the India uh, MS map as a great source for growing. So let me share my screen again. And let's go back to this website that I was showing to you. So if you remember our presence, is in most or uh, is in you know the eight chapters that we have delhi kolkata bengaluru mumbai pune hyderabad and chennai uh, and we have a support group in trivandrum so but while those are the bigger bubbles that you see on this heat map look at the smaller specks that are growing across the country and that i feel is already uh, showing results if you look at the data it again reinforces what Dr. Prasad was telling us earlier today, that gender, the, it's more of women focused. And in fact, Dr. Your, uh, your, your data was right on spot. We have 60% versus 37% male, 63% women. So, um, uh, so this, uh, the data that we're getting from the map is reinforcing what we know at a global level, at an India level, and also adding on new data, like look at this data set. We, where we also asked our participants if they're going, if they're accessing health centers uh, which are private or government. And we're having an overwhelming 85% saying that they go to private health centers. Uh, the age group shows that we have an overwhelming uh, majority of uh, youth, uh, 19 to 45, being affected by MS, uh, which is again a uh, global, uh, uh, also in, uh, is aligned with the global data on MS. So, um, so there's some India specific uh, data here. There's some, all of this is, all of it is India specific, but some of it is reinforcing what we know at a global level. Uh, so please take your time, go through this website in detail, and then always remember that uh, these are various ways in which it can be used. You can get to know more about the Atlas of MS also, do link back to that. 
Uh, you can contact us at contact at the rate indiamsmap.org if you have any difficulties in, uh, in going through with the website. But the most important part is, part is this, fill out the form. I'll click on this link and just quickly run you through on what we need from you. You click on that link on fill out your form, you will be redirected to this Google form where you have to fill in your email mandatory because that is where we are also uh, making sure that no duplicates come in. Uh, city, state, please select the age group, you age bracket you fall into, their gender, and if you have been diagnosed with MS since when, and of course, uh, if you go to a government or private or both for getting your health facility treatment, MS treatment done, and then press submit. Uh, your information will be uh, securely kept with us. And uh, as you some, once you submit it, you will be part of the specs that we see across this map. And as, I, as we said before, in the next one year, we hope this map will populate. And as Dr. Prasad has also has shared in his own speech and also has been writing on our uh, chat box, please everyone uh, take part on this and this can become a very important tool in the coming years. Renuka, over to you. Thank you. Um, and Nazia, I think, I think um, we have to give a little bit time to, for people to look at the website. The link I see has already been put in the chat box. We'll share that again. You will find a recording of this entire webinar on our YouTube. Um, so you ha if, if there's somebody who has missed it or has had internet issues or we have had some internet or backend issues, don't fret. You will see it all on our um, YouTube completely the way you're seeing it here. So you will get another session, so to speak, of all that we have covered here. Uh, so that was really the exciting part. And um, can we ask Dr. Prasad for this and Rachel for their reactions to the website? Yes, please. Um, Dr. Prasad, what did you think? I know you have sent some very motivating words, but it would be nice to hear from you. No, it's uh, very exciting. I think uh, it will attra definitely attract people with MS to register. Uh, you know, just registering and the form goes somewhere is not as much exciting as you see something change in the map the moment you enter your uh, data. And I, I thank you. You have kept very minimum data, which will not uh, discourage people from joining because one of the one of the problem with uh, these uh, digital platform is you go on writing 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 and it's like a interactive voice response system which you sometimes find uh, if you have problem with your phone you never get to the uh, point and you get tied out so it is very uh, encouraging for people to see four or five things you enter and you see the change in the map immediately reflect, which is very exciting for people to see. I think this will be very attractive. And one, uh, one lesson which I have to take from your presentation is that uh, I have to move to private to see patients with MS more <laughs> than what I do here. <laughs> uh, thank you. Congratulations. And uh, I, I I think if this is something uh, very innovative. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you will succeed. It will be a movement which will be movement of the patients with MS. And this will have be much more, this will be much more powerful than any initiative which, you know, which comes from the top. It is a grassroots movement and I'm 100% sure you will succeed and we will see something very exciting and uh, i'm sure it will surprise everyone so uh, i i wish all the success to your campaign thank you very much dr prasad uh, rachel uh, we'd like to hear some views from you as well well i think dr prasad has said it all um it is really exciting i love the visual aspect of the map um, I think it's really important for engagement. You know, you're talking to decision makers and 
in that they, you know, to, to make them sit up and listen, actually having that visual map is really important. Um, I also think as a person with MS, it's nice to see that you're not alone, that you can see all the other people around India that have MS, um, which I think that is a really um, important fact facet for the they, they're not alone and sometimes it can feel like you're a very alone um, with this disease. I like the um, additional graphics that you've included about the, the demographics of the, the gender and the age. Again, I think that's really um, powerful to help people understand who um, is affected by MS and it shows that it affects many people in different age groups and also that um, kind of skew towards women. So I think it's really exciting. Um, I can see that you've already got so many people populated from across India, and I am really excited to see um, how that builds and how many more dots are added to the map over time. Thank you very much. So um, we complete the session of the launch and hearing the speakers and like, all good things this also needs to come to an end and i'm sure a lot of you are already um, have other things to do on this evening so i will um, actually quickly try and sum up some really salient points that has been a great learning and what are our next steps and what we are thinking um, so uh, right at the beginning we of course saw the whole update on how the campaign and the petition is garnering various support from people outside our area, outside our community, which means we are also reaching out to many new people who have been diagnosed with MS, who probably didn't know about MS till they actually were diagnosed with it. Neither did they know about MSSI, which is the only national registered, registered patient welfare group that works at different levels, both at the regional as well as the national to provide services and advocate for the rights of people with MS, just so that they have a good quality of life. I know that there is a very, very long and arduous journey that we have to embark on. This is just the beginning. And it is for a lot of us always the beginning when something good happens. It just needs to multiply and we need everyone's support. So that's one aspect that we heard. Coming to the speakers, um, it was very, very um, surprising. In fact, this was the biggest learning for me to know from uh, Dr. Prasad that India is one of the G27 countries that does not have data. Of course, we don't have data on MS, but to be able to be a part of a certain uh, uh, a group of countries and we not have data is something which is, is a call to action for us, definitely. And through the support of the hospitals, the healthcare providers, the pharmaceutical industry, the government, we definitely need to keep this momentum because advocacy is all about persistent and consistently voicing our demand and bringing our challenges to policymakers. What I also have noted is that some numbers and that Dr. Prasad said when he, he mentioned that there are close to 6,500 new cases every year that are reported. So I, I cannot even imagine the mind boggling numbers that we will be looking at. So uh, together we need to make sure that there is a focused and systematic collection of this data. Having a government hospital-based registry and just having eight chapters when the numbers are growing does tell each one of us, and we have a voice telling us in our heads what we need to do and how we need to do. We are just walking on that path, and I think the destination is for us to see, but there will be obstacles and we will overcome them together. Uh, another aspect that I realized um, and which was very uh, comes from a very human humane aspect is that this crowdsourced map that we are planning to get will not only be just numbers, but what I also heard Rachel say, behind every number is a person, a real person with flesh and blood 
and all the issues. And these will also, this, this crowdsourced um, map will also actually, because we are putting a person behind this number, will actually be able to demonstrate many of the issues, one of them being the cost burden of MS, the other being the psychosocial, lack of psychosocial support, uh, mental health, depression, all these things will come up. And it's not only going to be for people to hear that, oh, in MS, these things happen. These are real things that are happening. And each one of you who are MS persons here will be able to amplify the voice of those who are not here. So that's something which I took away from uh, Dr. Prasad's segment. What I took away from Rachel was absolutely, Rachel's segment was very, very, I have just captured the most important things which will make a difference to MSSI is that I saw that in US, they had two times more than what they thought was the prevalence of MS. I won't be surprised at the end of a year or two we will be probably another country with a different economic strata coming up with something like this. I really won't be surprised. So that's one. The other aspect is how countries were able to push the government with the numbers that they had to invest more in uh, MS and also the different kinds of problems that people were facing. So that is a very interesting aspect. What I also heard, Rachel, and I have noted, and we have at MSSI also discussed, it is in English, no doubt, but with presence in seven states through our eight chapters, we already have experts in the house who can help to translate all that you are seeing in English so that the reach gets wider. Each one of us is an expert in our native language. And it is not going to be difficult for us to put our heads together, set some time and translate these and have a much more diverse lingual uh, inclusion when it comes to participating in the MS map and, the, and mapping it through crowdsourcing. Finally, uh, I, I, I come to the India MS map per se website. It is only something which has started a few weeks ago and it is showing us promise. Each one of us will need to talk to all our groups, like all the speakers and all of you have already probably started thinking, how are we going to get this to our groups? Some of you here are associated with 500 disability organizations. Think of the power that we can uh, harness when we have so much support. It's already there. We just need to identify and pick it up and run with it. You all have access to Nazia. We have shared the website details. All that we need to do, if you have a problem, please reach out to us. All of you know that we have our chapters. It is on our website. All the details are there. If you come up with some ideas, please do feel free because after all, it's together that we are going to make this movement stronger. We also need to make our voice louder. So those were some of the very salient features that I captured. And of course, as a part of the campaign, you have seen what we did on 25th. You saw what we are doing on the 1st. Uh, there is something going to happen on the 12th of uh, August, which is International Youth Day, the MS data did show you that the 19 to 45 years is the biggest chunk of people with MS currently in India. And that's not about to change because MS is a disease of the youth and young people in their most productive years. So don't forget to tune in to us and we will have all the information. Our youth wing is already buzzing and putting together some activity that they want to do. So we are going to revolve around the same numbers and statistics and real people are going to share some of their real stories. So that's what's going to happen on the 12th. That was a sum up. And um, there have been so many people who have put uh, so much of effort 
have had sleepless nights, have had probably, I have probably put them into anxiety and panic attacks, and I apologize. But um, for that, we have to thank all the people who have been involved. And um, I would hand over the floor to Javed, who's our National Advocacy Project Director, to deliver the vote of thanks. Uh, Javed, it's um, over to you for the vote of thanks. Thank you, Renuka ji. Good evening, everyone. It is an honor for me to have the opportunity to give a vote of thanks on this special day. First of all, I would like to thank to Dr. Kameshwar Prasad for taking out time from his busy schedule today and giving us an insight on multiple sclerosis situation in India and need for MS MAP. Also, I would like to extend a special thank to Ms. Rachel King from MSIF for inspiring us to work on India MS MAP and sharing her experience of MS Atlas. I would also like to thank the MSIF for their unstinted support and confidence they have in us. I wish to express my gratitude to our president, Mr. Videsh Oprai, for providing encouragement, support, and setting vision for the organization. A special thanks goes to our national secretary, Ms. Renuka Malakar, for giving us regular guidance and support in developing India MS map. And I would also like to express our Sincere thanks to all our respected chapters, chairpersons, secretaries, and members for their constant support in providing data for India MS map. As no program can become successful with a single person, so I extend my big thanks to all our MSPs for making this India MS map launch memorable one for all. I also Thank to all our friends from other disability organizations who are attending this event. I would also like to thank our backend team, Mr. Sanket, Ms. Anjali, and Mr. Amit, who provided all the support to make this event successful. And last but not the least, the credit goes to our creative team, who conceptualized and designed the India MS map. I would like to thank our communication and campaign lead, Ms. Nadia Iram, and our IT backend support person, Mr. Venkantesh, for their contribution in developing India MS map. I would also like to thank Ms. Preeti Berry for supporting us in posting uh, on Facebook. So thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. Thanks a lot, Javed. This is where we are, we are in Bangalore, Chennai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Pune, Indore, Kolkata, Mumbai. That's where, and of course, we are now, we now have our support group in Trivandrum, which you will see um, getting um, more active very soon. Um, there are estimated to be many, many people living with MS in the state of Kerala, and Trivandrum will help us to reach out to those people as well. Um, here is our coordinates. Please do take a screenshot in today's day and age. Everything is on the phone. Just take a photo from your, uh, with your phone or just press the screenshot button. You have everything. www.mssocietyindia.org is our website. You have all the information. You will have access to all the chairpersons, secretaries of our respective chapters. They're just a phone call away. I don't know how they do it, but they are always on the phone. So you please do reach out if you have any clarifications. You will find the head office numbers as well uh, on that website. We are on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, Insta, and all of you are already following us. Just spread the word amongst your networks. And um, together we will, of course, have a snowball effect and make it really larger than life. And we will see you again very soon on the 12th. So with that, it's a wrap. Thank you very much. Have a very, very good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. And